G'day, and welcome to episode 2 of our Red Bluff to Murchison series. In this episode, we spend our last day at Red Bluff with some fishing and relaxing around camp. We then take a detour through Carnarvon for some quick repairs, then head to Murchison House Station in Kalbarri, where we set up camp, do some fore driving, get stuck, and make some more repairs. So here we are, we are down the beach from camp, that's camp in the middle of your screen right now and uh, we're just doing a bit of fishing. Hey Damo, just uh, what are we after here today mate? Yeah, anything that bites? Some kind of, some kind of fish, yeah? What are you, uh, how big are these hooks you got on the, on the line there? It's big. It's, it's about that big. Yeah, and uh, what's the conditions like that they're casting into here? <laughs> Wind is semi behind us, I guess, sideways. Yeah, let's have a little peek over the edge. So we're going to cast it into uh, the lighter water, yeah? I'm a novice at this, so I'm the protege. Apparently we're trying to catch some kind of like sea sea cows. Yeah. Hi right, buddy, let's get fishing. Come on, mate. Well, he's caught something big. I think it's a spearfish. It's coming your way, huh? Yeah. Around. There you go, mate. <laughs> Give him a kiss. Fuck yeah. <laughs> what is it? That's a big snook. They call him. Ah, you're a big snook. Look at the teeth on that. It's fairly big, eh? It's a ripper. Alright. Chuck on the barbecue. Do you want to give him a kiss? That's what they do, isn't it? Go on. Stick his uh, beak into your mouth. <laughs> Put your tongue in there and see what happens. Yeah, buddy. So this is our camp at uh, Red Bluff. We've decided we splashed out. 
paid an extra five dollars a night and we're staying at one of the humpies or our huts so beautiful weather today it's our last full day here there the toilets just there just a drop toilet set up it's pretty clean doesn't smell pretty cool we're just putting a few things away show us your back mate Oh jeez. That's um, what happens when you when they live. When you try to rub your back on the reef. You should see the reef though. <laughs> It'll get you back. This is our setup. Hot water system, been having a shower every night, it's pretty nice. Solar panel set up today. Used the generator the other day because had three days of rain, so or cloudy weather at least. So run very low on power. My camper trailer. Pretty cool little setup in there. Got my everything's drying out. I haven't had the opportunity to use the boat yet. The ocean's probably flat enough, but I don't know if we could get it out past that first break, so. Hopefully at um, Murchison, we should be able to use it somewhere. Pretty awesome little hut. Well set up. Got these big windows you can open and close. You can see this here. Take these poles out. This window closes up. Got everything inside here. There's a couple of beds table. It's my gazebo, just airing it out because it got wet the other night. Everything's in here. Double bed. We set up all our kitchen gear in here. It's been really nice the last three nights just because it has been um, a bit drizzly and a bit rainy and a bit windy. It's just sort of makes it really comfortable to be able to get in there. Have some hard floor under your feet. Bit of shelter from the rain. Last night was pretty nice. So the rain eased off about eight o'clock. We had a few drinks around the fire and a couple of cigars. So today's been really nice. Done a bit of fishing. I caught a, um, a snook. It's about 80 centimeters long, 70 or 80 centimeters long. how well you can see down the beach there but everyone's out the sun will do that to the place so we're just chucking a few things away we want to get out of here before eight o'clock tomorrow morning stop and pick up a couple of things in Carnarvon and refuel, rewater, a couple of little supplies at the shop and we're off to Murchison House Station for five days. So yeah, pack a few things away, have a few drinks, cook some dinner, won't be having a big one tonight. Hit the road tomorrow morning. That is Red Bluff, really nice spot. If you've ever thought of um, heading this way, drop toilets, no showers, no water. Um, you're not that far out of Carnarvon if you wanted to just to quickly trip back to pick up some supplies. A lot of these people camp along here, stay for a couple of weeks at a time, so you know they have to make the drive back. I uh, thoroughly recommend it. Alrighty, day four on the trip. We are leaving Red Bluff. It's a beautiful morning, as you can see. This is probably the flattest it's been so far, so uh, a bit of a shame. We couldn't take the boat out, but we'll have to save that for Murchison River. We're about to head off then. Back up the red dirt track. Nice scenic trip um, back into town. We're going to stop off at Carnarvon first and kick on from there 
uh, get some supplies in Carnarvon and, and rock on. Cool. We're just leaving Red Bluff now. We might call in past blowholes on the way out and check that out. See how it is. It's uh, it's pretty flat today though. It's the flattest it's been our whole holiday. So we'll see how we go. We're on our way to Carnarvon now. We're gonna pick up a few more supplies, uh, fill up water, get some more fuel, all that kind of stuff. And then we'll kick on to Murchison River. Should be a nice day around there, hopefully by the river. Um, it's just about quarter past eight right now. It's 14 degrees, a nice brisk morning. And uh, we're hoping to be set up at camp, enjoying it by four o'clock. So we'll see how that goes. About a two hour drive to Carnarvon, something like 100 and 160 k's, I think, from where we are now. As you can tell, I'm sure, it's a fairly corrugated road out. We're still in Red Bluff now, but if we hit the road at about 60 to 80 k's an hour, we should uh, be hopefully skimming along those, those corrugations. Hello, see you in a bit. So we've just pulled over on the side of the road because there was a bit of wood falling off. And I said to Damien, mate, your wheel looks a little bit sideways. But it turns out that's normal. But um, there is a bit of play in the wheel. So, Damien, what are you doing? How are you fixing it? I'm just going to tighten the wheel bearing. Yeah, it's an easy job, is it? It is. It may require a hammer. Oh, just give me one moment. Should have you seen the time? It's hammer time. Yep. Push, 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 push. Nothing a good screwdriver and a hammer can't fix. You can fix anything with a screwdriver and a hammer. Anything? Cancer. Could do. Oh shit. <laughs> well. Is that better? Yep. Split pin, reinsert the split pin. Don't forget the split pin. The old splitty. Does it feel like it's a bit more stable now? No wobble in that no, wheel that anymore? That was okay how it was, but yeah. since the cap's off... It's better be <laughs> safe than sorry. Since the cap's off, I may as well do it anyway. It's convenient. But what's going to be a problem is I'm going to have to put some more grease in there. Yeah, it's going to be dirty as now, eh? All the dust in there. Yep. We'll just eat it away. Yep. Alrighty, so here we are at Blow Holes. It's... Uh, Really secluded spot this one. Really tough to get to. You can see the cars are um, pretty muddied up. The trailers are disgustingly dirty. And uh, you need a pretty hardcore car to get here. That's our cars there, obviously. You know, Land Cruiser are decked out. Um, nice, nice van over there. Mazda holding a big van. Uh, Bentley convertible. Uh, hang on, what? <laughs> Bentley convertible, all right. And uh, there are the blowholes. Try and get some good footage for you.
mate. We put an IGA in Carnarvon and we're doing a bit of bush mechanics. IGA mechanics. IGA bush mechanics. What's the plan? So we need a dust cap because the bearing will fill up with um, sand and grit. So we're at Carnarvon has dust caps for market around camper trailers. So if you have a market around camper trailer, get us the dust cap. Yep. 50 mil. So we're going to use a sour cream tub and a hose clamp. Hopefully that does the trick. That should do it. Fixed up the bearing. I just chucked some grease in there just to make sure we just drove back along a pretty long dusty road. But he's all clean. It's tight. Sour cream dust cap on there. <laughs> Screw. Don't try this at home. No. Probably not. Boom. Uh, cut. Hang on. <laughs> Alright, new plan. That didn't fit. So, so if you have a market or a camper and you're in the bush yeah, yep. or at IGA, um, it's probably not the best way to seal it as that we are only going on the highway. But it's better than nothing. And I've had enough. We want to get to camp. I would assume a baked bean tin would work, I think. However, a stubby holder also works. That should do the job. That'll do. I'm going to tighten that up. That'll do the job. That'll get us to where we need to go. Alright mate. Good job. Get it tightened up. Push yeah. Mechanics 101. Good stuff. Uh, Bryn, what happened? Uh, Did you let your tires down? Hang on. Hang on. Did you let your tires down under 25 psi like you were advised to? No, he didn't. Apparently 40 psi and isn't very good. So, this is why. Now, Bryn, what did the lady say about messing up her track that's just been freshly, freshly cut by the grader? I don't remember, mate. Just, what did the lady say about the track? What? Don't destroy the track, I think she said. <laughs> Now you managed to destroy the track going down the hill. <laughs> you must have had the handbrake on or something. So the rule is here, let your tyres down before you go forward driving. Let's see how he gets out of this. The trailer's on a pretty sharp angle so he can't reverse any further backwards. I don't think he's going to come forward. I think we might be uh, breaking out the winch. So I've just let the air out. I'm gonna give it a cracker going forward. I oh no, here he comes, here he comes. I don't know if he's gonna get it up there. It's looking good, looking good. Just gonna rock it backwards and forwards a few times, see if we can't make a rut. Gonna give him a hand. Well done, got out of there quite easily. It's amazing what some air out of the tyres will do. It's quite soft sand, but it's also quite wet, so pretty um pretty grippy. It's made an effort to not bog himself down, which is the key to driving in the sand. We'll see how the old chef gets up there. camp spot we found this little gem right on the river. We unpacked in record time and collected surrounding firewood and enjoyed a well deserved cold drink and a swim. Time for a quick dip from not having a shower on this holiday. So I'm resigned.
resorted to going for a swim in this lovely river. Thanks for joining me. It's not too bad actually. Nice little um, ramp in here to get in. Otherwise the rocks around here are pretty slippery. But uh, it's a beautiful time of day. Again, how's that sunset up there? Just beautiful. of a trip. Here we are, we're set up at Murchison House Station and uh, it's an awesome location. We camped right up on the river here. Uh, we pulled in last night about 6pm. Uh, went for a little drive just to find out a few camps and we went to two, two different camps and uh, decided this is the nicest one. Heaps of driving to do around here uh, but let me just give you a quick tour of the camp setup. This is my view from the bed. So there's the river right there. Hello, Cuba. Hello. This is uh, the view from my bed. There's the river. And uh, that's where we had the fire just there. Uh, got a tinny, and there's Damien's set up over there. Beautiful, beautiful location, and it's a beautiful still morning over here. So, uh, as you can see, we have heaps of room out here, so plenty of room for the dogs to run around. There's no one else around, although the road is just behind us, uh, one of the main roads along the river. So, beautiful little spot here, all set up. And you may notice, I think I'll have a bit of a flat. We'll see how that goes. So we're just having a head into town. Uh, I've got the tires are leaking around the rim. The air is coming out around the rim. Uh, seemed to happen last night. I uh, had to let the tires weigh down on the car because it got bogged with the trailer on and some sand so that's way down to about 12 psi uh, so you may be able to hear it maybe a slight whistling uh, anyway so yeah gonna get the tires taken off and get them reset and see if that helps uh, then come back and have a play so we've just gone for a walk we are overlooking Calberry town at the moment we are about 80 metres above sea level. We've just come from the town centre, getting the tyres taken off the car. Turns out there's a bit of dirt and mud in between the tyre and the rim. So getting that taken off to get cleaned out. And whilst we're waiting around, thought we'd come out and check out the view. Hang around for episode 3, where we explore some of the 350,000 acres of land funding various campsites. We go right up the northern point via GG's camp, straight through the guts of the station. We then head west to the coast and follow that all the way back down towards camp, where we catch up with some mates and later do one hell of a good job getting bogged. Check it out, it's going to be worth sticking around for this one. When our sun was crowded, Jordy Jimmy, oh Jimmy, yeah, Jimmy got 